Okay, I've been asked many times about doing shadow studies in Revit, and people are often concerned about doing shadow studies within a space to see how much light is coming in through a window wall. So I've opened up um, a template file, and I've, I've left everything the way it is, except for I've drawn these three opaque walls, I've drawn a floor on the second, on the second level, and a floor on the, uh, on the first level, and a window wall at the uh, south end of the massing. So, and I've left the top open just for the moment. So there's a couple of things that you have to do when you're getting ready to do accurate sun studies. One is to come into the Manage tab right up at the top middle and go to Location. You're going to need an internet connection to do this. So the default, I believe, is, is Boston, Massachusetts, where Autodesk is, but we can come in and I'll just type uh, New Haven, Connecticut, and see if it sort of gets me there. I'm going to try again. Yeah, it did you mean New Haven, Connecticut? So I hit New Haven and it sort of gets me, you know, in a weird place in in the city, if I want to, I can just take this tick and drag it. And actually, it's giving you uh, latitude and longitude here. So if you really want to be super exact, you can sort of plug in those figures. Um, for solar studies, it doesn't make a big difference. But if you want to tag your property at a date and point, you do this. Now, this is distinct from the, the, uh, uh, the other points in your project file that you're probably aware of, the project base point and the survey point. This is standalone as it is, but it will affect your shadow studies because it tells you your latitude and longitude. So I'll click OK, and I've set it to my hometown. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my site plan. And if I, I hover over the little round widget, which annoyingly doesn't get any bigger when you zoom in on it, you see it says project base point. Now the project base point has to do with the way your building sits on the paper of your sheet set. And, and your project and the rotation of the project base point just wants to make one of the lines of the uh, of the building orthogonal to the page, so it's a, easy, a little easier to fit on the sheet and easier to snap when you're drawing. If I tab in below that and I hit the little triangular widget, you say you see it says survey point internal. Now this survey point talks a little bit more about the actual true north when we set that up, and um, it also will speak, if you start doing um, shared coordinate links, it will start speaking to other files and knowing the sort of rotational positioning of your building. So I'm not going to do it, touch it through there, but I'm going to come up to the Manage tab again, and I'm going to go over to Position and say Rotate True North. Now it gives me a warning. Revit's really good with warnings, and it says View must be oriented to True North. So all of your, all of your uh, sheets, all of your views are set up by default in Project North. And you see I can find that over here in the Properties dialog box. I'm going to set this one to True North and hit Apply. And nothing changes because True North and Project North are aligned when you start a file. So if I come and I say Rotate True North. Now let's say my True North is actually somewhere over here. If I want to be very exact about it, I can come in and say, well, it's 25 degrees counterclockwise. I hit enter and you see what happens it's now it's kept all my symbology uh, you know sort of rotated with the building I, I like to do this very early in a project so, because sometimes weird things can happen certain things won't rotate so it's good to get that set up beforehand if I go back into my level one view you see that it's set to uh, project north not true north you can toggle back and forth if you want but this one's set to um, true north and again, if I tab in and I find my survey point, it's, it's showing me like the true north, north of the survey point is pointed up. And if I grab the project base point, it's showing me that the angle of the, of the um, project north is, is rotated by 25 degrees. And this true north setting will be, will be understood by the, by the 3D view. So if I go to my default 3D view and I go to top, you now see that the north is sort of rotated off to the right by by 25 degrees. So, so that's important. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here. Uh, I'm going to click Graphic Display Options. And you can also do that over here in the uh, Project, in the Properties dialog box. And I'm going to go to Lighting. And you see how it says In Session Lighting. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change to Still. 
it now recognizes my latitude and longitude where I am. It's not sort of relative to the to a generic Revit view. And I'll click Fall Equinox and maybe make it like you know two in the afternoon. And I'll hit Apply. Not, you're not going to see anything happen because the shadows aren't turned on. And I hit OK. And then if I come down to the bottom, I can turn my shadows on right here. It's a toggle. Now what you'll see is is in the and we're still in the 3D view is we're kind of way up in space and we're sort of looking down if I hit shift and my right click or center button I can navigate back around it's sort of you know it's a topless model and it, it, what I want to do is actually show something with a top now, now what's puzzling to many people is that if I come in and I turn my section box and I start to drag it downward you're gonna see that the shadows are now shortening if I go down to the ground level, you can see that it's sort of forgotten that there's there's another floor above it, and it's treating it like this is the only model object in this space. The plans actually annoyingly do the same thing. So if I come in this plan, I do the same thing to the lighting, change it to still, fall equinox, it remembers those settings I plugged in in the other view because it's a preset over here. I hit OK and turn on my shadows. You see it's doing the same thing. Plans and sections are, are fundamentally the same thing as what you do with a section box in, um, in the 3D view. So we need another way to do this because I want to I wanna actually know what kind of daylight is coming into this space. Oh, and by the way, a lot of you probably noticed that even though I have a window wall here and in 3D, it recognizes that there's glass here. It doesn't work here. If for whatever reason you want to soup up the graphics, it's not, it's not technically correct because there's no top on it. But if you want to souped up the graphics, you could come in, and this is just a kind of off-the-shelf curtain, curtain wall. I'll pick one of the system panels, right-click, do select all instances, visible in view, and, and then still clicking over one, I'll right-click, say override graphics by element, and change my surface transparency to you know something like 50%. I hit OK. So now I've got a kind of you know somewhat like a representation of what the plan is. But still, if you really want accurate, an accurate idea about how the, sh how the direct sunlight comes in, you need that lid. So now I'll show you how to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the View tab, and I go to the 3D View, Camera. And there's this little checkbox in the upper left that nobody ever realizes is there. I didn't know it was there until somebody told me. I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to click once, and then click again. And it's going to sort of bring up a view that's sort of pointed sideways. Diag I, you know, I did my clicking diagonally through the model. So I'm seeing a far corner of the building. And there's a far clip, which I think I'm over in the properties dialog box. I'm going to turn that off. I don't want my camera to clip. But it's not oriented correctly. So I'm going to come up here to the view cube. Click, click. And then rotate it. So now I've got my, my uh, building correctly oriented. It knows where the north orientation is. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to save orientation and lock view. So now you see the little lock symbol is, is turned on here. I'm going to grab this frame again, which is it's sort of like grabbing a camera and a plan. It's, it's the same thing. And when I come over to the properties dialog box, I'm going to change the target elevation to one foot. Remember, I'm in a default file, so my level one slab is at zero. And I'm going to change my eye elevation to about seven feet, which still gets me below that second floor. And I'm going to hit apply. Now nothing happens because my shadows aren't turned on, but when I turn them on, up, oh, you know what we didn't do? This is a new view. We haven't set up our graphic display options. So I have to do that again. It's a view by view thing. I can, I can apply a template, of course, but I'm going to do it uh, again so you guys can see it again. I'll go and uh, turn it on still. Pick Fall Equinox, there's that 2 o'clock setting. Click OK, click OK, and then turn the shadows, whoops, sorry about that. Turn the uh, shadows back on. And now you see that I've got actually what is represented. Uh, it actually recognizes that there is stuff above our head, and it gives us a, you know, a shadowed rendering of the building. Now, it it's, it's also recognizes the entire height of the building as well, so the shadows for that, the wall going all the way up to the second floor expressed on the ground plane, which is a setting you can, if you go in here, you can actually turn that off in the lighting. Uh, gosh, where is it? 
right here. If I want to just turn that off, I can just make it my building interior. I think it looks a little cooler when it's on, so I usually leave it on. So that's how you do an interior uh, shadow study, and uh, thank you for listening.